Hey guys, welcome back to Max TV. In today's video, we're going to look at a couple of DMX 512 decoders that I've bought on eBay. So actually, we'll be looking. Uh, I was looking for those decoders for a later project that uh, I will show you uh, in a future video by making lights. It's a four-channel DMX decoder and slash dimmer, which is a simple arrangement. You got four channels output, which is red, green, blue, white power in and then DMX in and out which is just direct through but uh, while I was hunting for those ones and they're about 20 bucks on eBay I have found another DMX decoder that was very interesting I didn't know you can get one so that's why I'm making this video just in case uh, there's a lot of stuff on eBay that you can find but you don't know that they exist so for some sometimes you'd like to do a DMX lighting for your house and you'd be buying something like this and making a box you know for it and mounting it somewhere but I came across this DMX 512 decoder 4 channel dimmer and it is rack mountable just simple DIN rail mountable it's got a digital display so unlike those ones where you have to um, white with the deep switches uh, the channel this one has direct input but besides that it also has a standalone mode which is in a manual says that if you lose the DMX it will go automatically into the standalone mode with uh, it's got 20 programs you can select from uh, they're all very basic and um, pretty boring unless um, probably a couple of light last ones we're gonna be looking inside the unit and then after we'll see what's inside, we'll plug it in and see what it does of standalone because I haven't got any DMX hooked up at this stage. But I will be using it with that ArtNet controller that I've uh, posted in a previous video. So let's open it up. It seems to be just clipped on on the side. The clips have been popped and we have... So the display and buttons looks like a satellite board which I will disconnect. There we go. It seems to have a decent um, MOSFETs. NCE 6080A. So I assume they 80 amps. 600 volts 80 amps. By the look of it. It does claim to be 20 and a half amps. So four channels, five amps per channel. From what I can see, that standoff board is the one that handles the DMX, while the base board is the one that uh, handles the fading. It's uh, made quite well. A lot of heat sinking here, as you can see. That DMX board is not unpluggable, but it does look like it's got a lot of um, empty spaces for other components. So maybe it was doing something else, or maybe it's a universal board. So four for MOSFETs for, a uh, for four channels, uh, that would be a voltage regulator, would be 11.7805 or something like that. Uh, diode, two little coils, another inductor, and those big jumpers. So there's not much to see. Satellite board is got this annoying plastic on the seven segment display, which I will remove because it's supposed to be removed after the manufacturing, but they usually leave it on. I can't pick at it right now. But yeah, let me get some LED strips and we'll plug it in and see what it does. I have also just taken the satellite board with the controls and the display uh, from the enclosure and it does have a decoder chip. So those lines are actually uh, voltage common, uh, clock and data. The buttons are analog but the display is actually digital and it's decoded through that chip here which is um, TM1651. Uh, I assume that would be LED driver chip. And that processor there, uh, just if you're curious, it is STM, so it's an uh, STM8S10, I believe. Yes, 8S or 510. So uh, that's uh, it for what's inside of it. I'm just going to put it together and hook up some LED strips. 
As you notice, the lights are a bit dim at the desk. I've just hooked everything up and about to power up this uh, DMX uh, slash, what is it called? Uh, RDM decoder. So it's going to be operating in standalone mode because there's no DMX. All the DMXs, by the way, is coming at the top. So DMX in and DMX out. So you can have uh, multiple of those units linked to each other. So I had to use some solder to weigh down the LED strips. So I've got one pure white LED and one RGB LED hooked up to those four channels. Let's turn it on. All right, so uh, right now we've got program 28 on the screen. And as you can see, I'll probably, I'll see if I can dim it because apparently you can dim them. If I hold it down, that's the speed. So we can adjust the speed and make it fast or slower. And let's go to brightness. Oh, you can adjust the brightness. Great. So this is a global brightness that can be adjusted. So as I, I just saw that it changed the brightness on the pure white. So we'll leave it at this one. It's probably better for the camera and it wouldn't load my power supply that much. Uh, program 28. So let's see if it actually controls. So this one is just uh, scrolling 28, 29 RGB smooth and six color match. So the white one is just staying on. I thought it would be in sequence. Obviously, if you're using DMX, you can um, control it separately, but with this dimmer, it's just staying lit, unless you turn it off, unless I'm not understanding something. So let's try going into dimmer mode. So that's just a dimmer mode and Oh, it's just steps. So as you can see, there's multiple dimming modes and it's very smooth. So as you can see, it gives this slight burst of light. It doesn't just jump as a step. It's smooth dimmer. I'm not sure if you can see it on the, okay. So what's, that would be the DMX addressing. Again, program, uh, that's the, what if I hold it down? There's some functions. Ah, that's uh, so you can adjust the levels of each single. So you can actually calibrate uh, your um, uh, color. So, you know, sometimes if you go white, the color wouldn't be white. It'll be slightly purple, like in this case. So now I'm on red. And as you can see, I can just adjust red until it's pure white for the RGB color. Let's go for this. And same for blue. You can add more blue or less blue. Just to calibrate your, and that would be the green. Yeah. So you can calibrate your um, LED strip to the desired color. That is completely off. I completely detuned that thing. Uh, that's, uh... oh, and that's the white one. So you can mix and match. That would be back to red. Yes. Let's get out of this mode. So it does have multiple modes. Yeah, this, this is a great unit. I'm very happy for, from what I saw inside. It's very well made. It can definitely handle five amps. Uh, I haven't tried it on DMX, but I do trust that it works with DMX with no problem. And that's just indicating that DMX is missing by flashing the dashes. Uh, it's, yeah, I, if you're working on the project, I'd recommend getting one. It's definitely a great unit. And it's, the buttons are not, uh, they very recessed. So you can press it with a finger easily, but there's definitely no accidental press. So if I'm just ramming my hand here, it's not pressing. I have to actually push on it and then it works. So great stuff. And so, yeah, it, it's D4. DMX 512 decoder for channel constant voltage. Very good unit. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to hook this one up and see if it does have any built in internal uh, programs. I really doubt it does, but let's give it a go anyway. I've just hooked up the power to this unit. I haven't turned it on yet. I uh, didn't hook up any LED strips for the reason that it does have its own indicators for LEDs just on the side here. So if it does have its own program, we'll try to the switches. Uh, if they will see that LEDs will be lighting up or flashing. So here it is. So it's just a quick flash. That's the power LED. The next to it on 
just down here is the DMX by the look of it. Yes. And those ones flash, but nothing happened. Let's go uh, pressing the channel. So that would be the addressable ones. So we'll leave them alone. And let's go for number 10. Oh, it does. So number 10 is a standalone. So they are standalone as well. But it's only doing yeah, all four channels. All right. Now I'm curious to... To see... Okay, so once you activate the channel 10 uh, on the dip switch, then the addressable uh, dips, uh, dip switches from 1 to 9, I believe, or 1 to 8, uh, becomes the program selector. So, for example, this is the uh, first three switches are on. wonder if it makes any difference. And the fourth one, but you still have to press all four, makes them flash randomly. Number five. Six, seven. All right, let's plug the LED strip in. The LED strips are now plugged in and I'm just gonna apply the power, quick flash. And let's see what happens when we go to channel 10. So let's go through the, all the channels. So it is flashing the white one in this case. Again, sorry, blue is missing, but it is definitely outputting the blue. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I wouldn't be using big loads on it uh, because this, those MOSFETs don't really have a big heat sink on the back. It's just plain, as you can see. There's nothing there to tell you that it's going to be cooled well. They're not getting warm, though, but again, that's not a big load for them. So all the programs are there, and what I'm thinking is that it's generating its own DMX because that's the DMX indicator here. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you um, to make your choice on the DMX decoder slash standalone units. That is it for today. I will see you next time. Bye.